Hello church, I greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus. I thank our Heavenly Father for His mercy He has granted to us today. Surely His grace and mercy will flow upon our life all the days of our life. What an exciting moment that we are in. The exciting days that we are in now. As we see the number of cases dropping, but still we need to see the great victory of the Lord upon our life. And today I'm going to touch on the fourth portion of the area where we talk about confident in the time of crisis. Confident in the time of crisis. God is able to build us. God is able to shape us. You know, everything God is doing he has got a destiny for us you might not have seen what god is able to do but what god is doing in a secret it is going to expose it to the public for the glory of god and for the praise of god let's do a little study a little more confident in the time of crisis i use the word let's develop a lifestyle let us develop a process in us you know a process is a time a process is a period that we go through building to see something accomplished in our life God is able and God is developing our confidence in this season and this time I thank God for God will not fail you he's not going to leave you he's not going to abandon you but the grace of God is going to be made sufficient in all the time of our life. God is able to keep us from falling. I just want to touch this area. God is able to keep us from falling. And it's, it's a word that God is talking to us in this season. How the time of pain, the time of crisis, the time of difficulty, God's word, the unfailing word, the word of power, the word of authority, the word of faith uh, is going to come and permeate our life uh, and, and see what God is able to do as we He permeates our life. Uh, our spirit man is going to be strengthened and our life is going to be strengthened that we know for sure, you know, God will surely see us through. God is able to keep us from falling. I thank God. God is not going to leave you. He's not going to abandon you. He is going to lift you up. His right hand is holding you. I want to see a couple of scriptures before we go on because uh, God is speaking to us. God is actually reigning upon our life. Let's look at the word in the book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 24. Jude, chapter 1, verse 24. To him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault with great joy. You know, he's able to keep you from falling. You know, this time, as we begin to hear all kinds of news, the news that you hear in the media is not a good news. The news that you hear from all the surrounding is not a good news. The news that you hear in all the WhatsApp and all the messages are not good news. The good news is the Word of God. The good news is a word that is going to build your faith and your confidence. Let's develop our life in the spiritual life. You know, how to develop the Word of God that the Word of God says, you are not going to fail, you are not going to fall, but you are going to be raised up. God is going to keep us from falling. Let's see a couple of scriptures that I'm going to share with you. Jude chapter 1 verse 24 again. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy. God is going to present you before God because you are saved by the word of God. You are saved by the blood of Jesus. Your name is written in heaven. You belong to God. Isn't that wonderful? The Bible says you are his beloved. You are the child of God. And God is going to take care of you because you are the precious one. You are the choice of God. He says, you are not going to, I'll keep you from stumbling. 
And then number two, he says, I'll present you blameless. In other words, God says, I can set you free from all sin. And I'm going to bring you blameless before the presence of His glory with great joy. Because God has got confidence in your life. He says, I'm going to present you without blameless, without any fault, without any wrinkle, without any kind of fault in your life. And He's going to present you gloriously, with joyfully. He says, this is my beloved. I know my beloved has overcome and there is a victory of God in your life. To the glory of God, he says. Now, the next verse says, verse 25, To the glory of God, our Savior. To the glory of God. God is going to do miracle in your life for the glory of God. God is going to do something awesome in your life because He's your Savior. He is your God. If God is your God, who else we can turn to? Because He is the living God. He is the mighty God. And I, I, I want to thank God because as you begin to recognize He is your Savior, he is going to protect you and He's going to be with you. Through Christ Jesus our Lord, that means we say, not only you are my Savior, you are our Lord. Christ Jesus our Lord. Be glory and majesty and dominion and authority before all time forever and ever. God is going to do all things, He says, you know, through Christ Jesus, to be, be glory in majesty, in dominion, in authority before all times now and forevermore. God says your case is in the hands of God. When if your case is in the hands of God, God says, I will, I will make sure I see you through that you will become victorious, that you will become the choice of God. And God is going to bring you and present to God in a glorious manner, in majestic. I want you to see the word majestic. That means, you know, majestically with all splendor and power, with all dominion, in all authority before all times. And now for an, and forevermore. What a glorious thing God is going to do in our life. I want to thank God because God is doing that. He says, God is able to keep us from falling. Isn't that wonderful? God again and again is saying, you know, in this uh, section, in part four, God is talking about, I will present you and you're not going to fall. You're not going to fail. You're not going to drop down, but you are going to stand firm in the word of God, in the faith of God, because God has confidence in your life. I thank God for the confidence that God has. Now, let's look at another scripture. Second Peter chapter three, verse nine. The Lord is not slow to fulfill His promise. The Lord is not slow to fulfill His promise. At some count slowness. You know, sometimes in this kind of uh, situation where nothing is moving around you, you say, why God, the time is moving slow and uh, things are going slow and everything is slow. You know, it's not slow. God knows the best time. God knows the best timing. You know, we should not run ahead of that. Just be patient. And God is patient towards you. And if God is doing something awesome in your life, He says, you know, uh, you know, whatever God has promised, He's going to fulfill it. Don't look at it as slow. You know, God knows the best time. God knows how to keep you safe. God knows how to prepare. Because when God's timing is perfected in your life, you are going to see some glorious thing. You know, during this lockdown time, you know, thank God. You know, you can't go anywhere. God is bringing you into the house and bringing the presence of God. He's bringing the word of God. He's causing you to pray. He's causing you to read. Don't worry about whatever people around you. Sometimes, you know, you look at people around and say, I'm looking at you, you're looking at me. Don't worry. One day we'll all look at one another in heaven. But that is just a practice what God is doing. Just stay focused and see what God is going to do. The Lord in verse Second Peter chapter three verse nine, the Lord is not slow to fulfill His promise, as some of them count slowness, but He is patient towards you, not wishing that anyone should perish, but all should come into the place of repentance. All has to come and reach to the place of repentance. You know, this time, you know, as we wait upon the Lord, let's just look at God and say, Lord, I want to repent. I want to turn my life to you. And I want to thank you, Jesus, that you are seeing me through, that you are 
purging me of all my sins and all my wrongness and all my self-lack and, and all the things that are not pleasant in my life. Lord, you are exposing it little by little. But I want to thank God. The glory of God is going to manifest in your life. Amen. The glory of God is going to manifest in your life. As, as God says, you know, he's, he's able to keep us from falling. I want to see what we need to do in order for God to keep us strong. The book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17 says, Pray without ceasing. You know, praying is not just locking down and, and sitting down, kneeling down and praying, you know, one, two hours or three hours. Praying, that means you live a continuous prayerful life before the Lord. He says, pray without ceasing. You can thank God in whatever situation because God, our Savior, is looking at you. Now, another scripture that I want you to see, the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 18. Praying at all time in the Spirit, with all prayer and supplication, to that end, keep us alert in perseverance, and to keep us in perseverance in all things, and, and making supplication for all sins. Not only praying for yourself and praying for all the things and supplication, but keeping everything alert in perseverance, making supplication not only for yourself, uh, but also for your loved one, and also for all those brothers and sisters around in the church, and also for all those you know. Keep them in prayer that God in this season, there are hope, focus and our goal is to reach out to people and people must come into repentance people must get saved and people the world must come into salvation that is where god is keeping us and we need to pray for the salvation of the world all right i want you to see the book of ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 now to him he is able to do far more abundantly than all that we can ask or think according to the power that is working within us. I thank God. And now, to Him is able to do far more abundantly. You know, God can do something more gracious, more abundantly in your life. I thank God for every church members. I thank God for everyone who is listening. You are precious. God is able to do far more great. I want to take up the challenge and I want to pray for you that you are precious in the sight of God. Now He's able to do far more abundantly in your life, in your ministry, in your career, in everything that you do than we ask or think of. No, we can only ask for think and, and think a little, but God is able to do far more exceedingly in your life. According to the power that works within us, I want you to build your spirit and to say, God, I know you can do great things. You know, a big vision will always, God will do big things in your life. Big vision is where God will do big provision. Big things that you need to build in your spirit. Don't look at the small things. Don't look at the minute thing that is happening around in the world. Look at the big picture. God is sending the healing. The numbers of people for sick is coming down. People are getting healed. People are coming to a place where God is going to set everything free. And God is going to rain upon your life. Today, as we begin to see how God is building... Let us develop confidence in the time of crisis. Part 4. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to release you. And I'm going to do even part 5 to see what God is going to develop in your life, in your spirit. I pray as you begin to close up, I want you to do communion every day with your family. Bless them and glorify God because God is a glorious God that He will bless you. Let me pray for you now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you touch everyone who's listening to this message. Father, I pray that the Holy Spirit will just unfold before them and touch them, minister to them, heal them, deliver them, and bless them, Lord. Let the healing power, let good health, let provision, let the grace and mercy be upon their life and continue to bless them with the riches of God, with the goodness of God. And we are called a victorious person because God is able to keep us from falling. In Jesus' name we ask and we pray. Amen.